Hi guys, so in today's video, I just want to give you guys some tips and tricks on setting up your new art studio. tips and tricks I wish I had learned before setting up my art studio because as of now it's been set up for many many years and there's been little tweaks and changes that I've made but not huge changes it's about the same arrangement as it's always been more or less and there are some things to consider when arranging your art studio the first thing you want to think about is Wi-Fi. If you need to use the internet for your art business in any way, most likely you're going to want Wi-Fi in your art studio as well. Wherever your art studio is, is it part of your house? Is it in your basement? Is it in your attic? Is it in a separate building from your house? Is it in your garage? Is it in a whole different building on a whole different block in a whole different neighborhood than your house? So many things to consider when it comes to getting Wi-Fi to your art studio. So that's the first thing I would actually advise is if you need to use the internet in any way for your business and in 2023 and recent years before, most of us need the internet for some part of our business, whether it is helping us with shipping, whether it's helping us with our websites, whether it's helping us with getting on social media, so many things could involve the internet and so I think most of you probably need Wi-Fi or some sort of internet hookup in your studio. Now there, again, I, I kind of alluded to this, there's Wi-Fi and then there's direct line and then there's both. So in my studio I actually have both. My old computer is direct line to the internet so that means I actually have a cable that I run all the way from upstairs down here to my basement studio and it hooks straight into my old computer. Now my new computer is a laptop and so it runs off of Wi-Fi. So how do I set up my Wi-Fi down here? I'm glad you asked. First of all, the main source of the internet is up on the main floor of my house. And so I actually have this little Wi-Fi receiver I actually don't know what the term is. I will put it in the video if I <laughs> find out what the name of it is. But I have this little receiver. It receives a Wi-Fi signal and then it broadcasts it throughout my studio. And the important thing to note about this is you want that receiver set up as close to where the original source of your internet is. In other words, in my studio, it's over there. And I will show you a clip of that. I will insert a clip of that right here. So this little device brings my Wi-Fi signal from the main story and it brings it down magically into my studio and then broadcasts it to the rest of the studio pretty much. Now what this means is it, it almost boosts the signal of the Wi-Fi. I'm not a technical person so I'm probably getting all these terminologies and, and names wrong. But basically what my understanding is, is it makes the Wi-Fi reach a little bit further down here versus just having the modem and everything upstairs and not having any kind of way to boost it, any kind of way to make the signal go farther. This way I can get Wi-Fi in every corner of my art studio and so far I have because I do move around my studio quite a bit in the course of um, a month or three months or whatever the case may be. I move around the studio quite a bit and I work in different areas and that is going to be kind of foreshadowing for later on in this video. But the next thing I think you could think about is where do you want your computer, your printer, all those devices that need the internet, where do those need to be? Because as we kind of alluded to, you may have a little receiver to receive your Wi-Fi or you may have a cable running into your studio and that is going to pretty much determine where your computer needs to be, where your printer needs to be, and all of that. Now it's not set in stone because you may have devices that are wireless and I do. My printer does plug into the wall, of course, to get electricity, but it is wireless for receiving signal to and from my 
computers. So I actually have two computers. I have my old computer and my new computer. My old computer is an iMac that has the direct internet hooked into it. And then my new computer is a laptop and I just use Wi-Fi on that one. And I have been able to have my laptop here pretty far from the receiver, pretty far from the internet, Wi-Fi signal, and I've able to I've had it closer so I can have my laptop so far so good in every corner of my studio if that changes I will update you guys on that um so that is the second thing I would consider if I were you think about what kind of printer you already have does it need a direct line to the internet is it wireless how do you uh communicate from the computer to your printer and vice versa these things are all things that you can look up on Google. You can look up probably on the website of your printer. If you already have a printer, you can kind of look up these things in your handbook, whatever the case may be. And that can help you determine where your printer needs to go if you haven't already set it up. So basically, those are my first two tips. If you have to have internet, where is it going to go? Where is it going to be received? Do you need to boost it? You know, how much internet capability do you have in your studio? Does it reach all corners of your studio? Because if you're anything like me, you like to change where you are in your studio depending on the seasons, depending on how big of a work of art you're creating, and if you're filming or not. Um, so many factors go into where in your studio you are working on things. And so the next tip I have for you is what kind of artist are you? That's going to determine what kind of workspaces you need and what kind of workspaces you may not need. So if you are a multimedia artist, you create lots of different artworks with lots of different mediums. Maybe you do oil painting, but you also do acrylic, you also do watercolor, maybe you do gouache, maybe you do pencil. All of these different mediums require different workspaces, right? So when you are doing an oil painting, you might need to sit at an easel or stand at an easel. And depending on what size of artwork that you're going to do, you may need a bigger easel or you may need a smaller easel. You may be able to work in a little tiny corner or you may need an, a bigger, more open space to do your work. And this leads me to moving around your studio. If you are someone who needs a little bit of a change of pace every now and then, a little bit of a change of habit, change of schedule, or a change of venue, then I definitely recommend having different zones in your studio. And these different zones don't have to be vastly different than each other, but they need to have some sort of functionality for you. And what this could mean is it can mean an easel in the corner. It could mean a desktop easel on a desk near a wall. It could mean a chair and a table. It could be um, those rolling um, little shelf container things, those little rolling carts, which I highly recommend. And I'm probably going to do a whole video about them. But in this video, I'm just going to touch on the fact that as many things as you can get on wheels as possible is great. If you can get an easel on wheels, that's great. Now, I personally don't have an easel that is built on wheels already. Um, so the way that I do this is I actually have a little tabletop easel that I sit in one of my carts, and that cart is on wheels. Of course the cart is on wheels, that's what a cart is. <laughs> but um, this little tabletop easel, I have it sitting on a cart, and so I can wheel this easel around my studio. I can move it into the corner, I can move it near a wall, I can move it closer to my old computer, I can bring it near my new computer, um, whatever the case may be, or I can actually put my laptop on a cart and I can wheel my laptop over to my uh, easel. So I have options. I like to have mobility and movability in the studio. I like to be able to change what corner of the studio I work, I work in. And it just, sometimes it depends on what time of day it is, how much light is coming in, what season it is. And most of the time though, it just depends on my mood. And if I want to feel cozy in the corner versus spreading out and having a bunch more space 
and room to kind of like move around because with larger pieces you might need more room to move around. So the next thing you want to think about is light. Where is the light in your studio? Because that zone of your studio is probably where you're going to do your most artwork, your most painting, your most drawing, your most sketching, your most oil painting, acrylic painting, gouache, whatever. All of your art making, you're going to need a lot of light. Um, the more light you have, the better you will be at creating your work. And so you want to check where's the light in your studio. Are you relying on natural light? Are you bringing in artificial light? Is the light white light, warm light? That's going to affect how your art looks. You want lights that are more of the white light type um, or a more natural light type um, because you want the lighting to look to be clear on and not create a hue of color over your art. So. The reason for that is if you have a very orange, like, you know, cozy, comfy, like, orange light, which I do love those for my main floor of my house, but if you have those little orangey lamps right next to where you're working and that's what you're working off of, it's just not enough light. You want to go brighter. You want to go more white light, more um, natural light, something that's going to look more like sunlight and less on the hued lights. You don't want to really work in a space that's heavy on a certain color of light. It's going to affect how your art looks to your eye. It's going to affect how your art turns out. And you might get disappointed because once you put it in natural light or once you put it in a white light and look at it, it might not look anything like you thought it was going to look. So lighting is a hugely important aspect of your studio. And I get it, lighting is expensive and you can't always afford the type of lighting that you want. One of my favorite lighting solutions is to go to somewhere, like at some kind of hardware store, some kind of, um, I'm trying to think of the name of the store and it's completely failing me right now. So I will just have to insert the name in this video later because something about filming, it just makes you forget names of things. So anyway, there's this one store I like to go to and it's not really, like, I'm not usually the type of person to go to this type of store, but when it comes to studio lighting, they have the lights. It's easy to set up. I don't have to know how to do electrical. It's amazing. I literally just plug these lights in and they're bright. They give me the perfect amount of light for working on art. And they're also great, Just they just make your art look great too. If you like to do open studios and you like to show off your art to people and you like to invite people into the studio, they're also just great at displaying your work and making your work look the best that it can look because it is just the most accurate lighting. There's different brands out there. The brand doesn't necessarily matter too much to me. It's mostly about like, what are the lumens? And like, how bright is it? And like, what kind of light is it? Again, we're staying away from the colorful lights. We want the more uh, clear, like really bright, accurate lighting. And there are also those other kind of lights that you can get that uh, stand up and they're like box lights. And they can be really good for filming videos. They can be really good for, you know, positioning them accurately how you want to position them for using a camera and recording yourself making your art versus the lights I just talked about are more of the kind that you hang from the ceiling and you plug into your wall and they stay stationary. These other lights are more mobile. You just move them around. They're on like a little tripod and you put them where you need them to go and you can really move them around the studio and that's great, but they are kind of bulky and they kind of take up a lot of room. And since they're not suspended up on the ceiling, um, they, do, they do take up studio floor space. So when you do have them out, got to be mindful. It's easy to bump into them and it is, they are kind of aggravating. So I mostly use those for filming purposes. The next thing I do want to cover is a varnishing station. So that is one thing I really, really lacked for a long time in the studio and I still kind of lack it in a sense is I don't have a dedicated desk or table or, or workstation that is for varnishing. And it does really mess up your workflow and your process when you don't have a dedicated varnishing 
place <laughs> or even if you have a, t a big table like a big work table that you use for painting or you use for packaging and shipping your your stuff you can repurpose that as a varnishing table um and that's totally fine too i just don't really have that i have like a sh kind of short fold-up table and then I have this section right behind me that's a very small little workspace and I can varnish at either of those places but they're not really dedicated varnishing spaces and what I mean by that is you want to have something that's going to catch the overflow. Catching the overflow of the varnish is super important because even when you try to be super careful with how you're putting the varnish on the painting you're still going to have drips and things that come down your piece that want to get on the surface of your table. So if you have a tablecloth, you don't want that. You don't want a tablecloth touching your artwork that you're varnishing. Because the little fibers from the tablecloth will get stuck to the edge of your artwork while you're varnishing or while it's drying. So you really want some kind of plastic barrier or you want your table to be plastic itself. You want some kind of barrier between the varnishing of the art and the surface of the table, especially if it has a tablecloth on it. And so sometimes what I do is like with something like this where I have a tablecloth over it, I will get out the plastic and I will put a plastic sheet over that and so I have that really glossy plastic between my artwork and the tablecloth or the table itself. Um, especially if it's a table that you want to protect the surface and you don't want to get it ruined. You want to have something plasticky between the two. And you can get plastic drop cloths, you can just get packaging plastic as long as it's clean enough. You can slide it in between or you can put it, just drape it over your table and then put your artwork on it. So really, that is a huge recommendation of mine, is think about these little tasks that you've got to get done every month or so that you maybe you batch varnish. That's what I like to do. I like to have at least like three to five pieces that I'm going to varnish at the same time. But not everybody does that because um, a lot of people, they probably just varnish when they're ready to varnish each individual piece and that's fine too. It probably depends on your workflow and if you do multiple paintings at the same time like I do because I like to, um, what, is the, what is the word, I like to go between multiple pieces at once. I don't like to just work on say piece A and then just finish it and then move to piece B. I like to have like A, B, and C going all at the same time and I like to rotate back and forth between these three pieces usually. And so usually that means around the same time, which I wait a month before I varnish things, because that's usually best practices. Now it depends on what varnish you're using, but for my varnish, I think I'm being a little bit safe. Like I think I technically could varnish a little bit sooner than that than a month, but I like to be careful and I want to make sure everything's fully cured before I put that varnish on there, because that is best practices. So anyway, um, you want to have a space to varnish if you are an oil painter or any kind of painter or art maker that requires a liquid uh, varnish or finish for the top of the artwork. And the next thing you're going to want in your studio is some kind of storage solution. You're going to want shelves or cabinets or, or cubbies or just some kind of storage solution because you're going to need to store art supplies, you're going to need to store um, artworks that haven't sold yet, you're going to need to store your prints, you're going to need to store any, any products that you sell, you're going to need to store craft supplies that you don't use as often, you're going to need to store shipping supplies like bubble wrap and tape. But again, it depends on what your art business is. If you have a shop, you're going to need a lot of those different things because you're going to need shipping supplies and you're going to need um, the actual place to put your products. So you might have originals that you sell, but then you also sell prints and you also sell stickers and you also sell um, some kind of other products like tote bags or something. If you have the physical objects in your studio or in your house, you're going to want some kind of storage solutions for that. And you might also want storage solutions for temporary things like um, while something is drying. Maybe you're the kind of artist that you, maybe you do uh, work really quickly and you're not 
sitting there and you're not necessarily painting these tiny little minute details for hours on end and instead your work is quicker and faster and you produce a lot of originals really really fast you might need shelves to sit like especially watercolor could be an example of this you might want to sit your watercolor pieces or your gouache pieces in some kind of shelving system while they dry so that they can um, have time to dry and you can get them out of your workspace and you can keep producing art. So some of this is about moving things from one part of the studio to another part of the studio and just making sure that you're keeping your workflow going but it also just depends on what your uh, art career or your art business is or even if it's just a hobby. It just depends on how much you produce, how fast you produce, what you produce, and in what order that you produce things, and what order that your process is. So another thing you might want is um, not just shelves and cubbies and storage like that, but you also might want storage for your files. Uh, especially if you're a business, you might want file folders for physical uh, files maybe for your spreadsheets, maybe you like to have printouts of that in case something goes wrong with your hard drive or, or in case something goes wrong with your hard drive, in case something goes wrong with your computer. You might want to have physical printouts of some kind of things for your business. You might want to have your business licenses in your files, you know, like your old licenses that are no longer like hanging on your wall, but maybe you don't want to throw them away. Maybe you want to keep a record of how many years you've had your business licenses or maybe your calendars, maybe you like to keep your calendars and you don't like to throw them away because you want to look back at what day you did what and like what your schedule was like. Um, so many different things you might keep track of. Things that you keep track of for your tax purposes, like your receipts. There are so many little pieces of paper you might need for documentation purposes. Therefore, you might need some sort of filing system. And I don't think I'm going to show you a clip of my filing system because it is out of date and it is a mess up here uh, or down here in the studio. But upstairs is kind of my new filing system and it's up in my husband's office. And the reason for that is when we file for taxes, we file jointly. And so it kind of just makes more sense for me to keep my paperwork up there in the filing cabinet rather than down here in my mess of a filing system, which I do need to overhaul because it's not just my art business files, it's so many different kinds of files. I have a freebie folder, I have things that I've received uh, filed away, I have my retirement <laughs> documents filed away, I have so many things filed in here, and then I have things filed upstairs, and so it's kind of, it depends on what, what is here and what's up there, there's different things here and there. And then also things that I've been published in, like I was published in a calendar, a couple years ago and so that is filed in here so anything that I receive anything that I need to keep track of and want to document I have that filed so just keep in mind you know your filing system hopefully will be more organized than mine and you will be able to fine-tune it actually my filing system is really organized upstairs and that's the new one so really my up-to-date things my new things that's really actually super organized and it makes tax season so much better because I have this accordion file thing and I and each year is in each slot and it is just so much easier and I also have a list of things I have to take to the tax office and things that I have to give them and I have to show them so that each year I'm not confused and forgetful of like oh my gosh do I need this thing that I got in the mail do I need that thing that I got in the mail because sometimes they're like actually we don't need that or sometimes they're like, oh, we need to know this about you. And you're like, uh-oh, I don't have that on me. I thought I would need this, this, and this, but really I need this, this, and that instead. So I have this list now of what I need to take to the tax place. And, you know, that's something you might have to file away. I actually have it on my wall because I don't want to forget where it is because I am forgetful and I will forget where that is. So that's your next thing on the list is just storing your files and your paperwork and all those kind of like not as fun things about the art business itself. Okay, the next thing on the list is another storage thing and that is where do you store your blank canvases? 
your blank wooden boards, panels, things that you create your art on. There are so many different things you can use as canvases or maybe you actually do things on paper like you do pencil and marker art, illustration, that kind of thing. Where do you keep your paper, your panels, and your canvases? Great question. There are so many different solutions for this. You can do shelves, you can do cabinets, you can do a mix of both. I actually have um, kind of a mix of both, honestly. I, I do use shelves at the moment for the most part. Um, I have my paper right over there on a shelf underneath my little filing system thing that I was talking about in the previous one. And then I have shelves all the way back there where I keep canvases and boards. So I kind of split it up like that. I have my paper, um, I have my paper stuff here, and then I have my boards and my canvases there. But you can do whatever you like. You can put them together as long as they are stored properly. So some things need to be stood up and some things need to be laid down. So paper, probably better to lay it down flat so that it doesn't bow and warp over time. But wooden panels, wooden boards, maybe you can have those vertically so that you can actually utilize more space. Da, 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 da. And there's an airplane. There's an airplane out there. So, so here we are. All right, and then this tip is just a general overall tip for organizing any space in your house and that is to make sure that you put things with the other things that they go with. That may sound really obvious but for some of us who aren't always the most organized person or who used to not be super organized like me, you kind of learn this as you go in life. You know, you, you, you start to go, hmm, it makes sense to put all the coffee and tea stuff together and just like that in your kitchen, um, you want to put all your printer stuff together. So you want to have your paper for your printer close to your printer. I know that sounds so freaking obvious, but trust me, it can get lost in the shuffle, especially if you already have a studio and you're moving from that studio to a whole new studio. You might be like, uh, I don't know because I had a small studio before and now it's huge and I'm just putting stuff in there. It can get lost in the shuffle, trust me. And so, put your ink, your paper, your your cords, whatever goes with your printer, put it with your printer, or as close to your printer as you possibly can. And we talked in one of the first tips about Wi-Fi. And so again, wherever you need your printer to be to get those signals where they need to go to, to communicate from your computer to your printer and your printer to your computer, that's going to dictate where your printer goes and where your computers go. And so wherever your printer is, it's going to dictate where your printer paper goes. I cannot reiterate this enough. Now, I am still figuring that out in some ways. So, for example, you might have a studio and you might be like me and you have to use that studio space for more than one thing. So, most of my studio is used for my art business and my art business only, but there's this tiny little section of my studio that I have to use for gardening stuff. It's a very small section, so since it's such a small section, sometimes new things that I get and I bring into the studio uh, for that section don't end up in that section. And so that's where I need to work on things, is I need to work on getting some of my garden seeds, which are in this these cubbies here, a tiny little section of my cubbies, there's some garden seeds there because of convenience and ease of getting to and accessing. But all the rest of my gardening stuff is in that tiny corner over there. And so if you can, when you set up your studio and it has to have more than one purpose, let's say you're like me and you have a garden and it's right outside the door of your studio and it just makes logical sense to have some of your tools for that garden in here, right near the door, try to keep everything kind of over there that has to do with that task or that thing. Rather than me, who I have some of those seeds over here. <laughs> so try to keep like things with the other things they go with. And this isn't always going to go perfectly, especially if you're still figuring out how much room you need for each thing. And that was my problem. 
You know, I didn't really know how much room I needed for my garden stuff. I started out only really needing that little cabinet in the corner, and then over time it grew. My seed collection grew, my tool collection grew, and I started to realize not everything will fit in that cabinet. Another tip that I have is every year, maybe assess what your art studio looks like and how it's arranged and maybe reassess how you want it to be arranged. What is working for you and what is not working for you? Again, one of my things is I really want to have more of a dedicated space for varnishing things because varnishing things is kind of something I put off because I don't have a, a wonderful, organized, dedicated little spot to do it in. I'm always just finding a spot to do it and it makes it kind of annoying and kind of a thing I don't look forward to doing. So anything that is creating some kind of hiccup in your process, that's the thing you want to focus on and that's the thing you want to get fixed. But if you're starting a brand new art studio, it is a little bit tricky because if you've never had a dedicated art studio, you might not even know how much room you need for each thing. And that's okay. You're going to figure it out as you go. But these are just some tips to get you started so that you don't feel like you're just completely in the dark and have absolutely no clue where to start. At least with this video, you've got to start and you know, kind of, you can kind of gauge like, oh, I have this much stuff that needs to go with my printer. I have this many panels that uh, are completely blank and ready to work on and I know where I'm going to put those now. Or you might be like, oh, you know, I actually need a lot of room to varnish because I create a lot of pieces at once and I need to batch varnish things. Again, it's going to be up to you, it's going to depend on your medium, it's going to depend on your process, and it's going to depend on what kind of art you create and how much work you create. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope that it gave you some insight on how to arrange your art studio and where to put what and how to make everything come together into a cohesive workspace that you can look forward to coming into every day or every week or whenever you get a chance to work on your art. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye! I just added some new original paintings to the shop. Go to macylou.com to check out the new pieces. I also have prints available as well as different categories of products. I have a $12 and under section and a $25 and under section as well because I believe every human being deserves to have art in their home and to feel cozy and comfortable wherever they live. I also have a contact page where you can easily get in touch with me at your convenience for art commissions and business inquiries. Just put a quick subject line such as, hey, I'd like an art commission, and then in the message section, put in detail about what type of commission you are wanting. Also, feel free to use the contact form as a way to ask any questions you may have about the art or the shop. Thanks for all of your support, no matter what form it takes. To support the channel, like the video, comment, and subscribe. You can also support my work by buying art from me at macylou.com. Thanks for watching!